Thank you, Dr. Melvin, and thank you, Dr. Salke, for uh, setting the stage for this next uh, step. I have no disclosures. So as Dr. Salke uh, intimated that originally the incidence of laparoscopic cholecystectomy associated bile duct injuries took a spike and has since stabilized to approximately 0.3 to 0.6 percent, very comparable to open injury. Unfortunately, the incidence still exists. So one out of 330 patients that undergoes a laparoscopic cholecystectomy or open cholecystectomy is at risk for this issue. And despite increased experience, there's still this uh, problem. We spoke about, um, we heard about morbidity and perhaps mortality, but it also impacts patients' quality of life. Uh, in a study from Johns Hopkins, 167 patients were queried in terms of uh, quality of life, and approximately 49% of them had significant depression until that bile duct injury was uh, repaired. So I'd like to discuss intraoperative recognition, making the, de uh, the ter de determination of repairing this now or later, determining the optimal conditions of when to go back to the operating room, what preoperative studies should be obtained, and then what repair should be performed based on the location of the injury. So intraoperative recognition of an extrahepatic common bile duct injury. It's identified. You see bile. You know that an error has been made at some point during the operation in terms of the anatomy, and there is a definitive injury. The first step is to take a, a, a deep pause and take stock, take stock of your own ability to assess and address the injury, assess, uh, uh, take stock into your ability to get help within your institution through your partners, and um, make a determination if you're going to proceed laparoscopically or you're going to perform a laparotomy. I would say the next step would be to perform an intraoperative cholangiogram to better define the anatomy. Uh, historically, in the, in the beginning of laparoscopic cholecystectomy, it was thought that perhaps doing an intraoperative cholangiogram would definitively decrease the incidence of bile duct injury, and there were some papers that spoke to that. However, long term, it has been thought that doing that not just uh, decreases the incidence, but perhaps decreases the severity of bile duct injury. So um, most people today don't do routine intraoperative cholangiograms. However, in this situation, absolutely, it mandates some form of assessment of the injury, and intraoperative cholangiogram is the, is the uh, least invasive to do so. So you perform the cholangiogram, and you uh, are trying to assess the anatomy. It is very common to not only uh, uh, perform the cholangiogram, but not be able to adequately or correctly assess the anatomy. You just may be able to recognize that the anatomy is not right. So the Strasbourg class classification attempts to um, address this so that you can communicate with your colleagues as to where the injury has occurred. So class or type A leaks are primarily cystic duct leaks or leaks from the small ducts in the liver bed. The likelihood of you seeing this intraoperatively is exquisitely low. Types A, B, and C are most often the types that are recognized postoperatively. It is really type C and D where you have uh, a, a significant injury of the common bile duct or complete transection that is most often recognized in the operating room. So you recognize it, now what? Fix it now or fix it later? That's the determination that needs to be made. If you have the appropriate technical skill, if you have the appropriate resources, the appropriate exposure, it, um, there's data to show that immediate open um, repair with an experienced surgeon reduces morbidity, the duration of the illness, and cost, and certainly decreases that period of, uh, of uh, illness for the patient. However, you only have one shot, really, to do the best repair. The, the quality and the success of the repair is directly related to the experience of the surgeon and, um, and the number or, 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 or inversely uh, related to the attempts at repair. So the first repair really is your best shot to get the best repair. If you are not comfortable, if you don't have perhaps the, the, the experience or, or, or the appropriate help, 
or there is extensive inflammation, stop. And some folks will say convert to a laparotomy to better assess the situation. I would say do not do that. If, if you're not prepared to fix the injury, do not add to the injury. Leave a drain. If you can get a drain in the proximal duct, that would be outstanding, perhaps a, pedi a pediatric feeding tube and cannulate it out to a bile bag and, and then also an intra-abdominal drain. That's probably the least of all, uh, of all harm that could be done. And at that point, the better part of Laller is, okay, fix it later. Fixing it later um, allows you to obtain complete imaging so that you can assess the, uh, the biliary anatomy and the vascular anatomy. And um, it allows you to control sepsis and perhaps do a better definitive repair with uh, decreased inflammation in that operative field. So if you're going to fix it now, optimize your exposure. In other words, make a generous laparotomy if you're going to do it open. Um, obtain your uh, appropriate retractor that you would use for any kind of liver resection or, or, or biliary uh, operation. If you need loops, go get them. Sometimes the ducts are not dilated in these cases, and, and you cannot see the anatomy without magnification. Um, and get an assistant. It doesn't have to be an, a hepatobiliary surgeon. It, it, it's, it, if you can get a, uh, your partner that does a lot of these operations, it's better than a, um, an untrained uh, assistant. And then your goals are to maintain the common bile duct length and to avoid uncontrolled postoperative bile leak. So if you're fixing it now, your, your, your primary options for a tran complete transection are an end-to-end -end repair over a T-tube, I would have to qualify this and, and very much discourage folks from um, pursuing that if you have the alternative option of doing a, a ruin y hepaticojejunostomy. And, and the reason for that is there's a very high stricture rate post-repair of, of, of uh, common bile duct injury over a T-tube. If you are going to place a T-tube, um, here's a schematic. Uh, it can be placed in the common bile duct. It, most often we will excise this lateral aspect or distal aspect of the T-tube to, to facilitate drainage of bile. Folks with T-tubes are a little bit at increased risk of cholangitis and biliary obstruction. Um, the advantage is that it allows you to perform a cholangiogram prior to pulling it. The, uh, the preferred, again, is a ruin y hepaticojejunostomy, dividing the um, jejunum about 30 centimeters distal to the, cum, uh, to the ligament of trites and bringing the loop of, um, of jejunum to the right of the middle colic vessels in a retrocolic manner, and then performing an end to side, either cholodocojejunostomy or hepaticojejunostomy based on where the level of injury is. There is an alternative option. If the laceration of the common bile duct is not a complete transection, you can bring that ruin Y loop of jejunum and secure it to the common bile duct and place a T tube through the, jejunum, through the jejunum and exteriorize it. This essentially functions as a serosal patch, so you're not completely sewing to that ragged edge of the bile duct that's inflamed from this recent um, uh, cholecystitis. And then there is discussed this, um, if it's a small, simple laceration, to laparoscopically repair it with a 4 or 5 absorbable suture. I, I really caution folks with, uh, with this approach because more often than not that your bile duct is not dilated and your stricture rate is high, you're going to dissect out that bile duct more and uh, compromise its blood supply. So I, I'm really not a, f a fan of this approach. And then with regards to that video that Dr. Um, Sulky showed, He's been in practice for many, many years, and it took him one video to show that one duck that, that he clipped. That, that, is, that is an extremely rare scenario to be able to see that aberrant sectoral duck to be able to clip it and identify it intraoperatively in this scenario. So, okay, you decide maybe now I'm not going to fix it now. I'm going to fix it later. So you made an intraoperative recognition of the injury, and you decide to delay it. So drain, drain, drain. Um, and again, the delayed recognition, Dr. Salky re reviewed that the patient presents to the uh, emergency room or the hospital with some vague abdominal pain, maybe a leukocytosis. The bilirubin won't be 8 or 10. It'll be 3. It, it, it's not going to be a dramatic hyperbilirubinemia. And on ultrasound, has a fluid collection. So what do you do next? 
I think universally the C a CT scan is the best study to take to get a global, global assessment of what's going on. You'll see a fluid collection, you'll assess the uh, vascular anatomy, you'll see if there's some dilated ducts. So it's, a, it's an excellent starting point. Next step, you place a percutaneous drain. The percutaneous drain has bile in it, so now you've confirmed you have a bile leak. Now you want to assess the degree of that bile leak, and really there, there are um, two studies to be done at this point. Uh, one is a HIDA scan. A HIDA scan can differentiate between essentially a small leak or a large leak. A small leak may lead you to proceed with an ERCP. A large leak, um, where the majority of bile or all the bile does not go into the small bowel, um, that I would say would lead you to a PTC. The uh, MRCP, uh, I think, is the best, um, in 2018, best tool to assess that anatomy um, without any actual intervention and potentially harm to the patient. So if you get a PTC, this allows you to ha control the biliary outflow, it allows you to control sepsis, and it allows you to optimize the patient for repair in a few weeks' time. So I wanted to show you some of the, in, uh, the potential injuries on, that are identifiable by MRCP. This is a bismuth one, complete transection of bile duct greater than two centimeters from the uh, confluence. This is a bismuth two, much shorter distance from the confluence. Bismuth three, where the injury is right at the confluence. One, two, and three are easily repaired with a uh, ruin y hepaticojejunostomy with a single anastomosis. The one that is more challenging is this scenario where you have transection of both the right and, and left hepatic ducts and you have two, um, two holes that you have to sew to the jejunum. In this scenario, if you have this information a priori and if your left system is adequately dilated, I would strongly encourage to have a, you to have a PTC on both sides such that you can access it intraoperatively when you go back. Because when you return to the operating room, it's a dense, uh, inf uh, inflamed, scarred field, and the, the ability to trace um, your anatomy da down to the PTCs allows you to identify these two lumens so that you can uh, do an adequate and appropriate repair. So again, the ruin y hepatogogegenostomy is our preferred repair, especially in these larger uh, combi lift injuries. And in terms of technical considerations for the delayed repair, the PTC will serve as a guide to identify the duct or ducts. Sometimes you may look, be looking at more than two lumens if, if there are aberrant um, uh, ducts from um, the, the anterior sectal or posterior sectal systems. Um, keep that PTC in when you're doing the repair. Uh, it can serve as a stent across your repair. It can serve as a conduit for performing a cholangiogram uh, postoperatively. Uh, however, don't keep it in forever because uh, the longer you keep it in, the greater the likelihood it'll get occluded and put the patient at risk for cholangitis. The five to seven days after surgery, there's no bile in the abdominal drain. Uh, the cholangiogram looks good. It's time to pull that drain. It, it is time to pull that drain. Um, use absorbable suture. I would. I would prefer an interrupted repair because the bile ducts at this time after appropriate uh, a period of waiting are not going to be that dilated anymore and that will minimize your stricture rate. And then uh, definitely drain around the repair, perioperative antibiotics also to cover uh, bowel flora. So in summary, identify the injury and stake, take stock of your resources. I cannot, I, I think if there's one take home message here, that, that would be it. I think it'll be heard unanimously through all the talks in this session. If the repair is, is planned for later, if, if you're not gonna fix it, I don't see any utility of performing a laparotomy. It's just adding to the patient's um, uh, morbidity of, of, of the events that have transpired. And if you're gonna de delay the repair, optimize the patient, delineate the ana anatomy, use the PTC to your advantage. And one more point for the PTC is normally uh, the interventional radiologist will put in an eight French PTC. That's uni universally the, the first one that they'll put in. It's the smallest caliber, the least offensive to the patient. However, invariably, that will get occluded very quickly. So in, in speaking with the patient and counseling them, say there is an expectation that this PTC will likely need to be upsized in the next week or a few days even. 
to get it to at least a, a 10 or a 12 French. It can go up to 14, so there's plenty of room, room for growth. Um, thank you very much for your attention. I hope that this uh, situation stays uh, away from you in your practice, but if it does, uh, proceed with caution and proceed thoughtfully. And uh, this is our team at City of Hope. That's where I work. Thank you for your attention.